I will join others in welcoming you warmly. And those are our brothers that have been here express my pleasure in meeting you once again. Uniqueness of 2023, the, the overwhelming presence of the youth, that is a, and all these are bullet points I'm telling you. The ever st strengthening resolve of women to participate. And this is largely because of the fate women have suffered in the last eight years, banditry, and the, in the last uh, 16 years, terror in the Northeast, displaced, dislodged. Those are two bullet points. Part of the uniqueness is the demographics. The three key officials, the driver of the system, national chairman, uh, then the presidential uh, candidate and his vice are all born after independence. First and one of its kind. Now, another point of uniqueness. Um, the records of Peter Obi as an outstanding politician is coming to the fore. Uh, he received not from local bodies, but the Millennium Development Goals consistently named him the best governor. He never borrowed a penny in eight years, uh, left behind 75 billion, and is the only governor up till today who has not received a penny from his state. He was a successful, highly successful businessman, owned a bank, rose through the ranks. Nine years after leaving government, no controversy, no charges of corruption or anything. These are records that are unheard of. And he's set out to look for something close to his records in Aronimit. Part of the uniqueness in 2023, the women and youth have identified with achievers. They want somebody who succeeded out of government. Out of government, you succeeded, so we're looking for you. Because the world is going private. The government will regulate. We don't want anybody who made name and fortune in government. That is part of the uniqueness of 2023. Uniqueness of 2023, again, is that the smaller minorities have spoken to themselves and have realized that when they come together, the other dominant groups are the minority. Part of the uniqueness of 2023, but let me just make a deviation here. I mean, our common faiths will permit me to say that our creator does not make mistake. I want us to understand fully the situation we're in. The name of Nigeria registered at the UN is Federal Republic. It's not the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia or the Vatican City, Islamic Republic of Iran, Iran Libya, or Mauritania. None of those. Then we again say that uh, the Creator didn't make a mistake. You realize in the Saudi Arabia, 99.9% .9 of them are one faith, one tribe, one language. God didn't make mistake. Nigeria, 250 languages. God didn't make mistake. And then again, his verses followed. You must stay together, live together, and do justice to each other. And he didn't make mistake. So justice, political justice, is the fourth DNA of Nigeria. If that DNA does not function, our body temperature will overheat. We'll die from the fever. This is the issue of faith. Bring in Nigerian political history to sink in that this issue of faith is real. Um, six years after independence, we ran into trouble. We, didn't, we recovered after three years, millions lost. We didn't find our democratic bearings until 19 years later. Now look at it. Obasanjo, Christian Southerner, Shagari, Muslim Northerner. Ku, 
Babangida, when he was living, Shoneko, Muslim Christian Southerner, Shoneko. Abachaku, Abdul Salam, Abu Bakr handing over Obasanjo, Christian Southerner. He was going after eight years, late Umaru, Muslim Northerner. God, God recalled him. Jonathan, Muslim stood, Christian Southerner. 2015, and if you recall, in 2010, when he passed away, Muslim legislators in the Senate and everywhere stood for that constitutionality. He walked through them and they went around the north and pleaded for him. Muslim northerners for Jonathan. Christian southerners in 2015, one of them destroyed his card in broad daylight for Muhammad Bahari to win. Again, from Christian southerner to Muslim northerner. Part of the uniqueness of Nigeria. Why today, I don't have to call names, one leading politician is not the vice president of Nigeria. It's because what couldn't happen in 2015, the world has moved on. Nigeria has been realized for what it is. He could not be a vice president in 2015 because the Muslim Muslim ticket cannot work in today's world, in today's Africa, in today's Nigeria. By the way, I'm a respectable practicing Muslim and I respect all faiths. In my university, there was a time that there were more Christians employed than Muslims, and I didn't know until they told me. So I respect all faiths. Now listen, um, in 2023, what could not happen in 2015 when Buhari said Muslim, Muslim ticket cannot work? It cannot work again, for God's sake. Days have moved on. Lots, uh, a lot of water has passed under the river. It cannot work. It cannot work after another Muslim ticket. It cannot work. This is the truth of the matter. We're, we're regulating the body temperature. The gene is at work. It has to work. Then um, the other gentleman in 2015 claimed it was a turn of the north, the reason why Jonathan had to be removed. All these things I'm telling you are on YouTube, on social media. He said it. Both of them have dis disqualified themselves. This is based on the issue of faith, based on Nigeria's political history. Nigeria is unique. We have a different name. We have different history, different political trajectory. And based on those things, shall we conduct and win our elections? Now, um, even when it is moving back to the south or to the Christians, as we say, Peter Obi has, you would see it there, repeatedly said he should not be voted by anybody on the basis of his religion or where he's from. Uh, after the Civil War, 53 years ago, we decided to forgive each other rehabilitate, reconstruct, we did. Built unity schools, did NYSE, brought southerners to the north and northerners to the south, intermarried, all the things that have happened. And you can see it reflected in the oscillation of Nigerian leadership. It is now on whichever count you wish to take, whichever count in terms of qualification there isn't any candidates or any two candidates that these people, our leaders, have diligently worked to produce. You have employed staff in your respective organizations. There's something we call resume. And when you're looking for the best result, you go strictly on the resumes, assess them. Sometimes you ask them to come out and do the practicals. Our resumes have been read by the world and we're the distant number one. I have to lose modesty at this point. Mm -hmm. Our practical works have been read, and we're the distant number one. Mm -hmm. I have done special legislations regarding procurement, regarding Islamic Development Bank, regarding healthcare, regarding security and everything that no other legislator has done similar to it. Regarding the environment in the south, in the Niger Delta, I did from Northwest. Mm -hmm. I did, and everything I said is in the Hansard in the National Assembly to be verified. We are the distant number one. So in terms of 
qualification. In terms of uh, uniqueness and who the people wish to align with, now the ethnic minorities have come together and they are looking for another minority to say that we identify with you. It is about time to show all Nigerians that we are equal partners of this country. It's about time we do that. It's about time we remove the hatred in the heart of other Nigerians that they don't matter as much as others do. Remember how slave trade ended? They came together and gently started passing the message until it got somewhere. How colonial regimes crum crumbled. How military regimes in Africa, one after the other. Now what we are faced is, is with, for democratic governance to work. We have democracies, but we don't have good governance. It doesn't add up. Democracy must work with good governance. Because in the Middle East, they have good governance without democracy, and the whole world is quiet about it. No one can challenge Saudi Arabia or UAE or Qatar. You have the good governance already. What are you? You're looking for democracy. You have it. We have the highest security, highest living standards. Why? Why? So everybody keeps quiet. We have democracy, and since 99, we have been producing out of school children and misery and poverty. We are going to turn things around. We are the only people who keep saying, hold us responsible if it doesn't work. Because we will end subsidies scam, foreign exchange scam. We will introduce the procurement system I have been working on for 24 years. Nobody will, based on his relationship with those in power, go and make 900 million naira out of a 1 billion naira contract and go away scot-free. We're going to extract 1 billion naira worth of uh, utility from every contract we spend. If you want to make money, we welcome you. Go into enterprise. We have unequivocally given these. Uh, now, the dynamics of 2023, I'm not per se directly campaigning. I'm telling you the truth on the ground. 18 political parties filed presidential candidates. 15 of them could not even go around the country. Out of the 15, 16 of them did not visit more than three states. So there are actually three political parties that mean business. Out of the three, two of them have misconfigured themselves on the issue of faith and Nigeria's political history. They cannot win the election. They are on the ballot paper. They are not in the ballot box. This is the reality on ground. And anything counter to that, Nigerians are seeing it. There was um, the youth crisis of NSARS. There was NSARS. We begged them, asked them to go back. The next election is not far off. There was the history of Nadeko and the hangover. And you never take any people for granted. Nobody knows how Nigerians uh, will react. Finally, sir. The promise is that 2023 presidential elections, if conducted well, it holds the promise of giving us that stable, prosperous, secured Nigeria that the world, and particularly our brother and sister African countries, have been waiting for. The key to it is a successful 2023 presidential election. On our own part, we will secure and unite Nigeria. We are business people. We, we, we created wealth. We didn't drive wealth out of government. We know where the money is. We'll bring it out, and Nigeria will prosper. And we will bring an end to this endemic corruption. Thank you, sir.